Hello, lovely internet strangers. Come along with me to a terrible place known as SJW Book Blog World. The constant mistreatment of women in Game of Thrones is exhausting. Exhausting! It's just like, how do I get through the day? I had so much energy, and then I just started reading Game of Thrones. The women were just mistreated so badly that I just lost all my energy. I needed to take a nap in the middle of the day. I don't even think it's about the books. I think it's about the TV show, which like, hello, you're a book blog, so talk about the damn books. But no, no, that would be too much to ask. Okay, so right at the top here we have CW, which is not the channel on the TV. That stands for content warning. So in case you need to go prepare yourself to take a nap because it's so exhausting to read about, there's your content warning. Look at this. While no one is safe from harm in this show, infamous for killing off its main characters without warning. So they do acknowledge that literally everyone gets massacred in this world. GOT has developed a pattern of humiliating, torturing, objectifying, and hypersexualizing their female characters more than any male character on screen. So it doesn't matter that everyone gets maimed and killed and shit on and whatever and abused. No, it just matters that by some ratio we have determined, it happens to the women more. Yeah, they're talking about the TV show, not even the book. As one of the biggest shows on television, one has to wonder what message it sends to its audience when the majority of its female characters are subjected to some form of abuse for the sake of shock factor. Really? Really? I used to be this person. I would have read this article and been like, representation, the message it sends in society, etc. It's so problematic, it's so harmful, etc, etc, etc. Like, that was me. Again, acknowledging what it's doing right. There are strong female leads on screen who challenge the norms of their misogynistic society with their wits or physicality, but... There's always a but. Anytime one of these articles starts to sound like it's gonna say something positive, it's like, just waiting for the but. Just waiting for the thing that you're gonna be pissed off about. Like, oh, you did all this great shit, but nope, fuck you. I'm still not happy because I can never be happy about anything. That would just ruin my whole purpose in life, the whole way that I survive my fuel. But Game of Thrones takes two steps back in the path of progress by subjecting the majority of their female leads to some form of mistreatment by either torturing, degrading, assaulting, or sexualizing them. Do the men not get tortured? Okay, like I haven't watched Game of Thrones in a while and I only read the first book and I tried to read book two and I got bored. Like I'm pretty sure that the men probably get tortured. Maybe they're not sexual sexualized. Look, it sucks, but that's what happens to women, okay? You're in a brutal world and there are gender differences. This is the problem, like they don't accept gender differences, so they're just like, why do you have to sexualize women? And it's important to understand why women are the ones constantly being objectified and punished on screen in this global sensation of a show. Oh yes, tell me why. Please tell me why. I would love to know. I'm sure you're gonna explain it and it's gonna make complete sense and be totally right. In Game of Thrones, men make difficult decisions for entire kingdoms, go to war, and are able to speak out and rise in the ranks. But the majority of the women are forced to loveless marriages, are abused in some way, or are only able to rise in power at the help of the men they have relationships with. They are often portrayed weaker, passive, emotional, able to be manipulated, or are overtly sexualized compared to their male counterparts. I mean, I'm gonna need someone who watched Game of Thrones to like explain to me the accuracy of this. I'm pretty sure just saying that like men make difficult decisions is like a very cherry-picked version of what happens to the men in these stories, because like the men are also in loveless marriages. A bunch of them just get straight up murdered. Like it's just a fucking privilege that you get to go to war. This is what every man wants to do. He gets the privilege to go die. They have this quote from this piece written on the Nerdist. Female characters can be smart, diplomatic, possessed of incredible mental fortitude, capable of breaking someone's spirit with a single word, and none of it can save them from sexual abuse. Yeah, and that's how sexual abuse works in real life too. Oh, wouldn't it be a fucking magical land that we could all live in if you were just like smart and capable of breaking someone's spirit with a single word, it would save you from sexual abuse. Why the fuck should that be the truth in a story? Because then they're always like, oh, the story needs to be accurate. It needs to like represent the real world and, and women's experiences. And, and this is totally unrealistic. But like, no, we want to have stories where female characters being smart and diplomatic saves them from sexual abuse. Like, what the fuck? Read that back. Play back the tape. Listen to yourself for more than five seconds. You will hear what I hear. Complete and utter nonsense. And then they have to go on the whole fucking bullshit about the male gaze, which I don't have time to get into here. It's just going on about how, you know, men often turn towards pop culture like GOT to gain pleasure from a distance. They enjoy watching a woman's body on display, so directors continue to show scenes that sexualize the women in GOT because they know it'll get a reaction from the audience. 
Hello, bisexual woman here. I love seeing a woman's body on display. A sexy woman's body on display. Love it. Show me more. And the characters who do escape sexualization, like Arya Stark and Brienne of Tarth, are often ones who embrace more masculine roles in the show. Their physical strength and ability to wield a sword saves them from being sexually abused, hinting that if a woman doesn't fight like a man, they will be abused at the hands of others. Or maybe like physical strength and ability to wield a sword would potentially save you from sexual abuse because if someone tried to rape you, you could fucking fight them? Like, I don't understand understand what the logic is. Like, if someone wants to abuse you, the only way they can force you is through either coercion or they can use physical force to force you. Your smarts aren't gonna do shit unless they've got you, like, tied up in the dungeon they're coming back to rape you and you can use your smarts to figure out how to get out of the dungeon. If you have physical strength and sword wielding abilities, that might save you from sexual abuse. Now, I suppose you're making the point that the writers chose these characters to not get abused and they chose chose the other characters to get abused. I don't know. But their reasoning is that why this persists so much is that men are often the ones creating mainstream pieces of media and therefore continue to spread of these sexist tropes. Okay, but like Mad Men had a bunch of shit where like women were getting sexualized and most of the writing staff was women. For years, women have been written to be damsels in distress or objects for males to claim. And due to this continued trope and the ever-present male gaze, it's no surprise women are punished or abused at a man's expense or have their bodies exhibited on screen as if they were merely a prop on a film set. Women on screen have been reduced to their sex and are only called strong when they overcome abuse at the hands of men or learn how to fight in battle. I don't even have the ability to explain how stupid this is. And yet, I cry because as late as like 2015, probably would have agreed with like everything in this fucking article. So I'm learning giving examples. And the thing is like, I haven't watched this part of the show. Like I watched the first couple of seasons. I didn't watch until like season five, but I do remember when the scene came out. I remember people talking about it. I remember seeing like clips or screenshots. I don't think that this is an example of the male gaze. Even by feminist definition of what the male gaze is, unless they've fucking just expanded that definition. There's like a scene in Veronica Mars, the characters are all looking out at the one character's hot mom in her bikini and she's about to like dive into the pool and it's like that kind of like pan up shot. We're looking through the eyes of lust at a woman's body. And this is not that. This is the gaze of humiliation. It says here, they're taunting, they're throwing garbage, they're spitting on her, they're humiliating her. Like she's not being raped. She's not being looked at as an object of lust. Nudity is part of humiliation. Showrunners understand their audience and what it takes for them to cling to their screens, and that is the clear mistreatment and objectification of women. Yeah, that's why people just keep watching Game of Thrones, because they just can't get enough of the mistreatment and objectification of women. I just don't buy that for even a second. Like, sure, there's some creeps and weirdos out there that just really get off when they watch Game of Thrones at, like, women being mistreated and objectified. Sure, but is that, like, the reason that most people have kept fucking watching Game of Thrones for this long? No, and a lot of people have kept watching it despite that shit. I don't even know what the fuck you're talking about. Like, the people that they're writing to agree with them. No one who's reading Book Riot, who's, like, an actual reader and not, like, me, who's just, like, a former reader turned hate reader. Like, no one who's, like, their actual audience would like disagree with them. You know, you never like read the comments on this site and there's like a dissenting opinion. And anytime like anyone kind of says something where it's like a little bit like, not sure, they get like an instant reply where it's like, whoa, what's wrong with you? They give the example of Daenerys and it's like, do you want reality or not? Because this was the reality of a situation for a lot of women in history where it's like, you got married young or you were in a culture that married you off. So you were like, 13 and you're having sex with a man who's much older than you, expected to be his wife. And that still happens in societies across the world. Maybe you don't want to see it. You're perfectly within your rights to not want to see stuff, but you have agency to decide not to watch that show. And you're just mad that the show is really successful and people want to watch it and it has stuff in it that you don't like. Why is this scene necessary? Why are these scenes normalized in pop culture? Like, I don't think anything that's in Game of Thrones is like normalized where people are just like, yeah, that's how it is. Like, I'm totally desensitized to this. Like, I think 
most people watch this and like they're disturbed by it. Apparently dragons are more realistic in a show that these creators have complete creative control over than treating women with respect. By considering an egalitarian society to be unrealistic, they are further perpetuating harmful misogynistic tendencies by portraying the abuse of female characters on screen as the norm or something to be expected. The showrunners, the writers, are not the characters. They're not abusing women. These are fictional characters, both the ones that are doing the abuse and the ones that are being abused. They're not abusing women. They're not real people. No one is being harmed in the making of Game of Thrones, as far as I know. Unless there's some hashtag me too shit going on between the actors and the actresses. They're fucking characters. Cersei Lannister doesn't have feelings. Not really. You, the viewer, have feelings. You have a lot of feelings about this show apparently. They're like, depict an egalitarian society. Okay, where would the fucking conflict come from? Where would the tension come from? Society is perfect. Everything's egalitarian. It's all great. Like, I'm not saying you can't have a story where society is egalitarian, but part of what is happening on this show is that there's all kinds of political machinations and there's all kinds of conflict that comes from the relationships between the men and women in the show and the power dynamics, and that is interesting for people to watch. And if that's not the kind of story that you are interested in, fuck it. There's a million other shows out there, go watch one of them. Oh god, and then they quote a reviewer from the Mary Sue. That's a fucking website that I should do a video on at some point because I used to be a heavy reader of the Mary Sue. And that was a website that I even stopped reading before I stopped being a feminist because it just got too cray cray, even for me. And Mary Sue was mad because rape is not necessary to Sansa's character development. And then the book writer goes on to say that explicit rape scenes are never vital to a storyline because it only sensationalizes a disgusting action or is used as a plot twist. Rape scenes are another form. Okay, so here we go. Explain to me. Another form of the male gaze where most often women are forced into heinous situations on screen simply because it'll gain more views or cause some buzz. People who are making TV shows for HBO aren't just like in it for their art. They want people to watch and yeah they're gonna do stuff that's sensationalized. This is a great section heading here. Constant abuse in pop culture is dangerous. What's dangerous about the writers of Game of Thrones continuously putting their female characters into abusive situations is that this further reinforces patriarchal norms that are ever present in our society and mainstream media today. It normalizes the idea that women have to survive abuse, strife, and objectification in order to be called strong. They perpetuate the idea that a man is strong on his own, but a woman must battle society and constant oppression to show off their strength when they are so much more than that. I don't think that any of the male characters in Game of Thrones, they're just strong on their own and they didn't have to overcome anything. They didn't have any struggles with their family, fighting like a brother or their father, that they didn't have to go to war. They had to do all kinds of shit. Like this is just fucking cherry picking shit that fits your fucking narrative. They perpetuate the idea that a man is strong on his own. Like where is this idea living? Who holds this idea? You don't speak for me. You don't speak for any of my friends. You don't speak for my family. Who the fuck are these people that are just like, a man is strong on his own, but a woman has to battle society. Oh, you know who it is? It's fucking feminists. Literally feminists are the only ones that think that. Feminists are like, women just have to battle society all the time. And I'm over here chilling like, no, I don't. It's fine. They can't just be like, I don't like this show. I have problems with the way things are depicted, with the way women are depicted. No, they have to then go put their moral judgments on other people, on artists. Leave them the fuck alone. Who are you to say that the writers of Game of Thrones have a a responsibility in what they choose to present to their audience. No, they fucking don't. It's a show for adults and adults can decide what they want to watch or not, what they think is too much abuse for them to see depicted on screen or not. The only responsibility that they have, if they have any responsibility, is as artists to tell a good story. That is all that should be expected of them. And if they tell a shitty story, then hopefully people don't watch it. No, but they have a responsibility because they have the ability to set trends and influence their massive audience and yet they continually exploit their female characters. Are people looking to the female characters of Game of Thrones as like fucking role models or some shit? If they depicted their female characters differently, then people will be like, I didn't have any hope. And then I saw this character on Game of Thrones. Like when I was a kid, I definitely had that experience with characters, but that came through the fact that good stories were told and great characters emerged out of that. It wasn't because 
because the creators had a responsibility toward me and they were like trying to make this character that was going to set trends and like make me feel comfortable as a girl having someone to look up to. And some of the characters that I've related to over the course of my life have been not female. They don't have to have boobs for me to relate to them just because I also have boobs. I mean, it's really weird for this article to be published now because this is the kind of like almost verbatim shit that I used to read back in the day. You'd always see this. I remember that article from the Mary Sue. The majority of the women in GOT reduce their bodies and aren't given the opportunity to show off their intelligence, perseverance, and strength without facing some sort of abuse along the way. It's time that women in media are represented with the same dignity as their male counterparts, where the level of their strength isn't defined by the amount of physical, mental, and sexual abuse they have to survive. It's time the popular shows break away from abusing their women characters for the sake of likes and views. So like they take one show, literally one show, where they're talking about like the way women are depicted in this one show and being like, it's time that women in media across the board and everything are represented with the same dignity that it's not happening in other shows. There are so many shows. There's so many popular shows where women are portrayed with dignity and where the level of their strength isn't defined by the amount of physical, mental, and sexual abuse they have to survive. Now they have to go through conflict. Bad things have to happen to them because it's a fucking story. And that's the only way you get a goddamn story is that people have to fucking overcome adversity like Jesus fucking Christ. Why do people not get this? They just like, they just want to have a story where like they live in fairyland and like nothing bad ever happens. And I'm like, that's not a fucking story. That's like some weird little video game that you could play when you're having a bad day or something some shit, but it's not a fucking story. So that was just basically a trip down memory lane. Let's rehash everything feminists have been saying about the TV show Game of Thrones. Haven't changed their tune. Broken fucking record right here. I mean, this is like the encapsulation of feminist TV criticism and what feminists think about Game of Thrones. So you can see the intellectual level that we're dealing with here. I really enjoy doing this. I like getting my rant out, but I am working on a couple of longer scripts. It's just, I have a full-time job, I'm dancing, I have a boyfriend, I have friends that I want to spend time with. I also just started a blog as myself. I've got a lot going on, but I am working on longer scripts. There's two that I want to do that are somewhat related, but will be separate videos. One is falling in and out of love with Jordan Peterson, and the other one is falling in and out of love with the intellectual dark web. Thank you for watching. I hope you liked this video. If you liked it, please give it a like. If you'd like to see more, please subscribe. I hope to have more content for you very soon.